in this video we will discuss the problem power of 2 and subsequences the problem says that will be given an array which will be of size n and the array will be integer type we need to return the number of non empty subsequences such that the product of all the numbers in that subsequence is a power of 2 and since the answer can be long so we need to return the number of subsequences modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So let's quickly see that. Let's suppose that we have been given the sample example 1. So if we consider the sample example 1, that is this particular example that has been given here. So let's quickly copy it and see. So now if we look at this particular example, so the example is nothing but n is given as 3 and the value ra has been given as 1, 6 and 2. Now what are the possible subsequences? So one possible subsequence of this array is just an empty array. Another, another subsequence is just one element that is it can be 1, it can be just 6, it can be just 2. Another subsequence is 1, 6. Another subsequence can be nothing but 1, 2. Another subsequence can be 1, 6 and 2. Okay. Now, uh, if we think about uh, any other subsequence, so we can say that another subsequence can be 6, 2. Right. Now, out of these subsequences, we will never be considering the empty subsequence. Okay. So, now we are left with these many choices. So, if you will see, is this subsequence a power of 2? Yes, it is a power of 2. So, we will increase our count as 1. Then, now is this subsequence 6? Is it a power of 2? No. So, we will say that we will not consider it. Now, is this subsequence a power of 2? Yes. So, we will consider it and count it. Now, is the, per like if you will see, now whenever the elements are multiple, so you have to return the number of non-empty subsequences such that the product of all the numbers in that subsequence is a power of 2. So now, if we look at the next test case here, so what is this? 1 into 6, this subsequence, product of this subsequence is 1 into 6, which is not a power of 2. So we'll say that, okay, we'll not consider this particular subsequence. Now, if we see for 1 and 2, this particular uh, part, so 1 into 2 is nothing but 2, which is a power of 2 subsequence. So we'll add it in my answer. Okay, now we see this subsequence. So the product of this subsequence is 12, which is not a power of 2, so we'll not consider it. Then we see 6, 2. So basically this is will this will be 12. So this is again not a power of 2, so we'll not consider it. So you can see that total number of subsequences that we have uh, considered, like that are power of 2 are nothing but 3. And if we look at the output, so it is nothing but 3 because 1 itself, the element 2 itself and the element 1 and 2, like basically these are the three subsequences in this particular problem that are having the uh, product as power of 2. Okay. Now, if we see another example, so if we see the second example that has been given here, so in the second example, we again have been given three elements only and the three elements that have been given to us are in this fashion. That is, we have been given 3, 5 and 7 and the output for this is 0. Like basically no particular subsequence in this particular problem, uh, in this particular test case is a power of 2. But how do we determine that? So if let's say if I give you any subset of it, like let's say if I give you something like uh, this, if let's say an array has been given, suppose we have, suppose we have 1, 7 and let's say 5. So if I, if I see here or let's say in fact if we have 4, so I can say that 4 itself will be a subsequence which, subsequence which is a power of 2. But if I see any other subsequence, so if I see 7 into 5, like if I see a subsequence that is 7 and 5. So in this case 7 comma 5, that is the product of this will be 35. It is never going to be a power of 2. So, if the, both the numbers are never a power of 2, then it is not going to be a power of 2, for sure. If I see another sub subsequence, let's say I consider 4, 7. So, in this case, the, uh, like the product will be 28, which is not a power of 2. So, how can I identify? So, in this case, you will identify that all the subsequences in which all the elements will be a power of 2, only those subsequences can be considered. Because if you see, if you, let's say you take the subsequence 4, 5, Again, it will be 20, which is not a power of 2. So, in this case, suppose we have a subsequence, like suppose we have an array that has been given to us. Suppose the array is 7, 5, let's say 1, let's say 2, let's say uh, it is 8. After that, let's say it is something like 14, it is something like 15 as well, if these elements are given. So, we can only consider those elements, like we, like if any, like if we want a subsequence to be a product of 2, then all the elements inside that subsequence should be a pro should be like if we want a subsequence to be a power of 2 if we want a particular subsequence such that its product is a power of 2 
So in that case, all the elements in that subsequence should be a power of two. Because we can see if if I take if I take any random example, so if I take 14 and I multiply it with 2, so I'll get 28. 28 is not a power of 2. But if I do this thing, suppose that I take uh, this value 2 and I take 8. So 2 into 8 will be what? 16, which is a power of 2. So always you can consider that all the elements in the subsequences should be a power of 2. Now, if I count what are the number, what are the total number of uh, elements that are a power of, of 2 here? So I can see that 1 is a power of 2, 2 is a power of 2 and 8 is a power of 2. So basically 3 elements are a power of 2. So I can say that 1, 2 and 8 are power of 2. Now how many subsequences can I generate? So one subsequence could be empty but I will not consider the empty subsequence. Another subsequence can be just element 1, another can be just element 2, another can be just element 8, another can be 1 comma 2, right? another can be 2 comma 8, another one can be uh, this thing that is 1 comma 8. Now the last subsequence could be 1, 2 and 8. Now if you will consider, so what is the number of subsequences? So let's say if I don't consider the empty subsequences, then the number of subsequence, total number of subsequences that are a power, that are a power of 2, whose product is a power of 2 is nothing but 7 here. What is 7 here? 7 is nothing but the number of elements, the number of elements that are out of the, in the array that are a power of 2, okay, My, that are a power of 2, basically you can consider, consider 2 to the power n minus 1 like let's say let's write it as 2 to the power c minus 1 where c is the number of elements in the array that are a power of 2 so it will be nothing but 2 to the power uh, like if if c elements are there let's like, suppose 3 elements are there that are a power of 2 so in that case how many uh, how many uh, subsequences will i have i'll have 2 to the power 3 subsequences that is nothing but total 8 subsequences but in this case i am also counting the empty subsequence so i have to subtract 1 so that will be nothing but 7 so we can say it as 2 to the power c minus 1 will be the number of subsequences that will be a power of 2 in this case. So basically what we need to do in this problem is we need to will be given the array will be given the elements. So we need to count in this array we need to count all the elements that are a power of 2 and after we have counted all the elements that are power of 2 then we need to return 2 to the power c minus 1. Okay. Now in this case the di only difference is that when you calculate 2 to the power c minus 1 then you have to take the modulo. So in this case you can use the fast exponentiation or you can say bin power concept or the fast exponentiation for doing this. But how do we check whether a given number is a power of 2 or not? So let's say if I get a number x and how do I check that x is a power of 2 or not? So in this case what I can do is I can apply a simple method that x and x minus 1. Okay. The answer can depend on this. If x and x minus 1, if I check if it gives me a particular value then it is a power of 2 otherwise it is not. How can I check that? So suppose x is equal to 4 here, okay. So what is x minus 1? x minus 1 is nothing but 3. So if I do 4 and 3, what will I get? If I do 4 and 3, 4 is nothing but 1, 0, 0. What is 3? 3 is nothing but 1, 1. So if I do an and of these two values, what will I get? I'll get 0. So overall, I'll get the number as 0 as well. So if x and x minus 1 is equal to 0, then that given number is a power of 2. Let's see another case. So let's say if we have been given another case, let's say we have been given another case let's say x is equal to 8 we have to check whether x is equal to 8 is a power of 2 or not so x is equal to 8 we have x minus 1 as 7 so now we do 8 and 7 what do we get so 8 is nothing but 1 0 0 0 1 2 4 8 yeah 8 is this and 7 is nothing but triple 1 now if i do an and what do i get i get 0 0 0 0 so if x and x minus 1 is equal to 0 then that particular number is a power of 2 otherwise it is not now let's check, check it on other example as well. Let's say if we have been given x is equal to uh, let's say 6. So how do we check that? So x is equal to 6 is nothing but what? It is uh, its representation is nothing but 1, 1 and 0. Correct? Now what is x is equal to x? What is x minus 1? x minus 1 is nothing but 5. 5 can be represented as nothing but 1, 0, 1. Now if I see these values. So I take the and of it. So 1, 1, 0 and 1, 0, 1. So basically I am taking 6 and 5. What do I get? So if I do an and here. So I'll get a 1 here, I'll get a 0 here, I'll get a 0 here. So you can see that basically I am getting a particular uh, like binary representation whose decimal representation is 4 and that is 4 is nothing but it is greater than 0, right? So if if the given number x is a power of 2, then x and x minus 1 is equal to 0. So in that case, I will count it as a, basically I'll count it as a power of 2. Like I'll say that, okay, that particular number is a power of 2, otherwise not. So if the given number x, if a number x it has to be power of 2, then it should satisfy the property x and x minus 1 should be equal to 0. Okay. 
that is what we will be doing so let's quickly write this much code here so what i can say here is that i'll be given this particular example in which what i should be doing here is let's say if we have been given this particular thing that is the array so i'll mark the count initially as zero okay and then what i'll do is i'll start iterating through the array so for int i starts from zero i is lesser than n and then we'll do an i plus plus after this what we'll basically do is we'll check that if a of i if the ith number and a of i minus one if this gives me a zero so in that case i'll count it i'll say that okay that particular ith number of the array is nothing but a power of two after we have done this so what we can do is we can store it in long long so basically what we need to do is after that we need to calculate like when once we have got this uh, the number uh, the count of the numbers that are a power of two right so once we have got the count then what will be the final answer the final answer is nothing but 2 to the power count minus 1. Why? Because as I said, if there are, let's say, 3 elements. So, let's say 1, uh, let's say 1 is there, 8 is there and 4 is there. If there are 3 elements that are power of 2. So, the total number of subsequences, total number of non-empty subsequences that you can make is nothing but 2 to the power 3 minus 1 as I have told you. That will be nothing but 8 minus 1, that is 7. So, in that case, I have to calculate this value uh, using the, I can calculate this value using the fast exponentiation. So, that I can remove the overflow parts because I have to calculate it modulo 10 to the power 9 because I have to calculate this uh, value the overall final answer after returning it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 so that it does not overflow so in that case I have to calculate this value I can calculate this value using the fast exponentiation concept and then I can simply uh, return the final answer okay so for that what I will be doing is I'll be using the fast exponentiation function so I'll say that answer is equal to nothing but first of all it will be nothing but power of 2 comma c okay once it is calculated then in that case in the end what should i return so i should uh, like i should return nothing but by taking the modulo so i will tell you about the fast exponentiation that i have written so let's uh, quickly say let's quickly write this as fast exponentiation so after we have uh, got the fast exponentiation so this is the fast exponentiation exponentiation function that i have already written after we have got this thing so in the end what should we return so we should say that answer is equal to nothing but answer minus 1 okay this is what we'll do but we'll add a modulo to it right we'll add mod and we'll modulo with it mod okay this is nothing but a uh, modular arithmetic concept that we need to use here to keep the answer uh, but for doing the answer modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 that is asked in the question and then we'll simply return the answer okay now let's talk about this uh, fast exponentiation function that i've written like how does it work so you can see that you can see that for at every step at every step the operations that i'm performing I'm always taking the modulo, okay? Because you can see if if uh, if a very large if we have to calculate let's say two to the power count where count is very large. In that case, this this value in the calculation itself might overflow. So I need to take the modulo at every step. So that is why I'm using I'm using the bin power concept or you can say fast exponentiation. If you want to read further about it, you can read it on Geeks for Geeks. Okay. Now if I will talk about this particular function, so how does it actually work? Let's talk about the fast exponentiation or bin power. So basically, if we have to calculate 2 to the power 16, so in that case, we can say that 2 to the power 16 will be nothing but 2 to the power 8. Like if you have to calculate, let's say 2 to the power 16. So will you multiply 16, uh, like will you multiply 2 16 times? No, you will not do that. You can do something better than that. What you can do is if you have to calculate 2 to the power 16, that will be nothing but 2 to the power 8 into 2 to the, 2 to the power 8. Okay. So what I can say is if I just calculate 2 to the power 8 one time and then I multiply 2 the calculated value let's say i calculate it in a particular variable temp or something if i calculate it this somehow and i multiply temp with temp only then i can directly get 2 to the power 16 so i have to calculate 2 to the power 8 just one time correct now let's uh, proceed further so now we can say that 2 to the power 8 is nothing but 2 to the power 4 into 2 to the power 4 if i want 2 to the power 8 so i can just calculate 2 to the power 4 one time and i can multiply 2 to the power 4 with itself right that is what i can do now again calculating for 2 to the power 4 will be nothing but 2 to the power 2 into 2 to the power 2. Now, 2 to the power 2 will be nothing but 2 to the power 1 into 2 to the power 1. How many steps am I taking? This is one step. This is the second step. This is the third step. This is the fourth fourth step. So, in four steps, I am able to count it. Now, what is four steps? Uh, like, at every step, I will be taking the modulo as well. So, what is four steps? Four steps is nothing but, if I see, I have to calculate 2 to the power 16. So, I am calculating 2 to the power 16 in four steps. This means nothing but, logarithmic of the power like if i have to calculate 2 to the power n so i can calculate it in log of this thing that is log base 2 n 
So in that case, what is n value? If I see here, so the n value is nothing but 16. So this is this can be written as nothing but log 2, 2 to the power 4. Now it can come out. So 4 into log 2 base 2. So now we can say that it will be nothing but 4 into 1, that is 4. So that is nothing but I can calculate the exponentiation of a particular number in log n time. Okay. And in this in this case, I can see that if it is if it is even, then I am multiplying b uh, b into b. Otherwise, if it is odd, then I need to do I need to multiply it one more time. Why? Because if the power is odd, then I need to multiply it one more time. Because if I want to calculate, let's say uh, 3 to the power 18, so that will be nothing but 3 to the power 9 into 3 to the power 9. Now, what will be 3 to the power 9? 3 to the power 9 will be nothing but 3 to the power 4 into 3 to the power 4 into 3. Okay, so we'll first of all calculate 3 to the, 3 to the power 4. We'll multiply it with itself and if the power is odd, then we need to multiply another 3. That is another another time we need to multiply the a to the power n. Then we need to multiply a another time if the n value is odd. At every step, we'll be taking the modulo. That is the only difference here. Like every at every step, we are taking the modulo. So if the power is uh, odd, then we are multiplying with an extra b. Otherwise, we are multiplying it with uh, itself only. Right, that is what we are doing here. And this is the fast exponentiation function. And I have taken the answer minus 1. Then I have added it with mod and uh, modulated it with mod as well. So that it uh, it remains in the constraint. And after that, I have simply written the value. Let's quickly try to compile this code to see if it works or not. So you can see it works on the samples. Let's try and submit it as well. So you can clearly observe that my solution was able to pass all the test cases. Now talking about the time complexity of this code. So the time complexity will be nothing but order of n because we are just iterating through the array exactly once. And in order of one time, we are checking that every element is like for each element a or i, we are checking that whether it is a power of uh, 2 or not. So the overall traversal time takes order of n. Plus we can say that another order of log n we are taking for calculating the fast exponentiation. So overall time complexity will be nothing but order of n. Talking about the space complexity. So you can see here if in this question that if you will observe, so I'm not using any extra space because if you will observe that then I am doing everything with just variables. So in this case, I'm not taking any extra space. So we can basically say that the space complexity of the approach will be nothing but order of one. If you understood this problem, make sure to comment down understood in the chat and also consider liking the video and subscribing the channel. Thank you.